What's happening everyone on YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I know I am. I'm having a great morning. I want to do a huge shout out to Dave from the dark side. He brought something to my attention that I had completely forgotten about and had thought to be benign for quite some time. And um, Although I've learned from then, uh, I haven't made a video about it because um, it's actually quite important um, and it has to do with driftwood. So guess what I'll be tagging today on my uh, video? Guess I'll be tagging driftwood. So we're going to be talking about the pros and cons about uh, boiling water, boiling driftwood, not boiling it the proper way if you want to remove the tannins, and then you know the con, uh, the pros of actually not removing them. Period. So let's discuss a few things. Number one, um, tannins are extremely good for your fish. So although, uh, like let's say you have a piece of driftwood and it's already heavy enough to go, you know, to sink and you don't need to waterlog it, tannins are extremely beneficial. Yes, they'll turn the water brown, um, you know, which will slowly go away. It can take years, as a matter of fact, but um, there's a lot of benefits. They boost the immune system uh, of your fish, uh, especially tropical fish and shrimp. It makes the environment slightly acidic as well, which will uh, lower the pH. Um, and it also uh, keeps viruses and disease-causing bacteria at bay. It helps stop those things from happening. But not only that, um, when it makes your water uh, slightly murky and brown, w what you're doing is you're recreating um, environments where instinctively these types of fish and shrimp and other animals have been living for thousands of years. It makes the water slightly darker so fish can be inches apart from each other and still you know feel as if they're hiding um you know and they also use it for uh breeding and feeding because um driftwood will also start to uh grow biofilm and algae um and fish love that uh driftwood will start growing that that nice hairy green algae and i think it looks great but let's say um Let's say you don't need a slightly uh, acidic environment. You know, you, you just want the driftwood because you think it looks great. You want to put a couple plants on it, but you don't want the tannins at all, which is perfectly okay. There is a proper way to do it. And I had made a video a year ago. I don't remember when I posted it, but I had made the video and it was just in my save playlist. And when I started posting videos... I posted it, and I never gave that video a second thought, and it, it wasn't really me talking about anything. It was a 30-second video of me just boiling wood, um, and so let's say you want to remove the tannins. You don't actually want to sit there and boil the wood for hours and hours. Uh, there is a correct way to remove the tannins, uh, so let me tell you what happens when you boil it. So let's say you straight boil it in a pot, and you've been boiling for four hours. What will happen is... Uh, eventually that hot water is going to make its way through the center of the wood, which will pull out every single tannin in the wood all the way to its core. But while it's doing that, that hot water is also going to start separating all of the fibers that uh, hold the um, wood together. So you're destroying the integrity of the wood. So because of that, and you've caused these the separations of the fiber of the wood, it actually creates uh, areas for bacteria and mold to get into the center of the wood and destroy the wood from the inside out. Um, er ergo, ruining the whole purpose of trying to remove the tannins the correct way. So, let's say you want to remove the tannins the correct way. Get yourself, I have a couple five-gallon buckets. Get yourself a five-gallon bucket, okay? Put your driftwood in it. Boil a couple gallons of water, pour that on top of it, wait about 10-15 minutes, and then pour some cold water on top of there. Now you can wait a day, you can wait two days, and that will get out the majority of the tannins. Now let's say you're not trying to get rid of the tannins. You, you want the wood to be able to sink. Okay, uh, Essentially you want it to be heavy enough to, to sink. 
Um, so you're trying to just make it waterlogged. So in my case, like if you go to a store and you buy driftwood, the the owner of that store or even a huge chain store, if you order online and it's got a company logo on it, they've already treated the wood. Okay, it's not like they went out in their backyard and started chopping wood and you've got, you know, um, parasites and all kinds of stuff living on the wood. It's already been t- uh, treated and more than likely it is been waterlogged and and will sink but in the case that you stick it in the water and you just simply want it to get waterlogged without removing the tannins then soaking it for about a week to two weeks in uh, purified water is perfectly okay that's what I do now I actually do keep the tannins if you have a really big tank the tannins leach so slowly that you'll hardly notice them and the amount of benefits that they give to your aquarium outweigh the amount of just trying to completely extract every ounce of tannin in your wood for one thing. Um, Now with that said I don't always buy driftwood anymore. If I see a unique piece I may buy it but um, I I live in a remote part of Minnesota where pardon me I'm gonna have some of my energy drink. Uh, I live in a remote area where there's uh, thousands of miles of where no one lives. I mean, my town, we have like 900 people or whatever, a thousand. And we have a creek, and I find natural pieces of driftwood, um, you know, or uh, pieces of like spider wood. Now this, if you're going to go hunting, for one thing, make sure it's legal and you're not stealing off someone's property or anything like that or endangering the environment. You're actually taking a dead piece of wood that, you know, and you're not taking it from... Uh, an animal's environment, you know, it wasn't, you know, already in the river and providing the river some benefits. It was loose and on the ground and drying out somewhere. Okay, so now those uh, wild driftwood, they are going to be loaded with parasites and a bunch of other things. And in that case, I would recommend directly um, uh, boiling it all the way to the core for, for at least a half hour. You want that hot water to reach to the center because there will be microscopic organisms that can live all the way inside there that can wreak havoc in your aquarium. So uh, keep that in mind and and always think uh, nature friendly if you're going to go out hunting for driftwood. You know, um, don't disrupt something if you can tell that it's in use. And in use means it's actually floating in the river or a beaver has been using it for something, or it's wedged up against something and fish are, are swimming underneath it, it's become someone's home. So, you know, don't take something's home, you know. Like these pieces, I found these, These, you know, it was driftwood, and at some point it had been washed ashore during a flood, and it was far away from anything, from any inhabitants that were using it. I also, make, I also take into consideration... Is it uh, loaded with termites? Have termites now made this its home? You know, are they now invading the wood and and making it their food? You know, and those types of things. So be um, uh, environmentally friendly if you're going to go collect wood. So, one, we'll recap real fast. One, you just simply want to remove the majority of the tannins. Don't directly boil it. Put it in a bucket, pour boiling water on it, 10 to 15 minutes, then add a couple gallons of cold water. I I would suggest purified water, but if you're going to use your cruddy tap water, you need to use dechlorinator. Okay, but uh, for for me, I don't know how many times I have to say, you know, on any of my videos, but tap water's crap. Unless you talk to your water company or you've tested it yourself and they told you it came directly out of a nutrient-rich spring under the earth, where it's got all the elements that would make you and all your inhabitants 100% healthy, do not use it. And if you are going to use it, you're going to have to alter the hell out of it. Okay? And uh, so, once again, Dave, thank you for bringing this up to my attention. You know, and I do use driftwood in uh, in all of my uh, tanks. It's it's really great. Uh, And let me show you. I have other tanks in these, but, you know, in here... You know, I, I've detached Christmas uh, moss to a piece of driftwood. 
Um, and here, I don't have any driftwood, but I use uh, almond leaves. Those are, you can see, sunken in the back. And I've got, you know, this tank's coming along. It's turning into, uh, I'm making it my jungle tank. And, uh, and then here, you can see... Well, it's kind of hard to see, but this is a all those plants growing off it. It's a, a bunch of uh, you know Java ferns and Asian water fern, whatever. That's a giant piece of wood going from the top to back. And then this puppy back here, as you can see, I made an entire tree out of driftwood. I attached bobitis to it, Christmas moss. I didn't do anything to that wood. It was heavy enough to sink, and I got some cholo wood in there. Cholo wood is great. Um, all cholo wood is going to be treated. You don't need to boil it or do anything to it. it I mean, it's 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 going to sink. It, it's it's pretty light. Um, I have a piece here, um, so it can take some time to to get waterlogged. But if you do what I do, I never keep a piece of cholo wood just like this. I mean, I like to decorate everything, you know. So. You know, I attach uh, rhizome plants to them, and I have made videos of this. Uh, moss and other things. So, thanks again, Dave, for uh, bringing this up. I now have a proper video of uh, driftwood and the benefits of keeping the tannins, um, and you know the benefits of not having them. You can you can remove all the tannins and. You know, and the wood will still look great, but then you're kind of eliminating uh, b all of the beneficial parts that come to it, that come with it, you know. So think about those things, you know. It is okay to have a perfectly clear tank, but it is okay to have one that's uh, murky and acidic because these are the types of environments that they come from. Think of a single river or lake that you've ever been to where you haven't seen wood floating in it or, or water that's crystal clear. Unless you're in the Caribbeans, Lakes and rivers, they're not crystal clear. They're brown, they're dark, they're murky. You can't see what's at the bottom of them. And that's what scares people is they don't know what's under their feet. You know, so, but, you know, fish love it. And it, it provides, like I said, a lot of beneficial uh, virus bacteria killing uh, tannins. And it makes the water healthier. So, uh, thanks again. And uh, thank you to all my new subscribers. And I hope everyone has a fantastic day. And like always... If you're not having a good day, get up and do something about it. Thank you very much. See you next time.